other person could have, let's say, a red mark or a scratch. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to The Problem Solver. How are you today? It's 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Welcome to The Problem Solver show and podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Today we have a special guest, Ryan Helmick, who's an attorney with the Defenders Law Firm that's going to be joining us today. I'm glad to have him on the show to get some great information out for everybody. Again, I'm Dave Kohlmeyer, The Problem Solver, a retired police officer of 17 years. I uh, started, started this Problem Solver show to help people uh, solve some problems. Today, if you have a problem or if you have a question for our guest or myself, you can call in and we'll give you some of the phone numbers that you can call in and ask some questions. But I'm here to basically help you with uh, the team of problem solvers and attorneys that I work with. So again, welcome to the show. Um, just to recap, uh, we have a progressive web app called the Problem Solver Vegas. At any time, you can uh, go to the Problem Solver Vegas app and add it to your home screen. And if you have any problems, you can click on a little bit of a button there. We're going to showcase it right now, how the app works. You can click on problems. And when you click on problems, depending upon your situation, you can write in if what your problem is. So let's just say that you had an accident, if you were arrested, if you had a traffic ticket, if you were injured, whatever the situation may be, if you're having housing issues, Family law issues, policing matters, neighbor disputes, mediation, whatever issue, whatever problem that you may have, I like to basically help you guys out. There's no uh, problem that's too small or too big. So again, you can go on here at any time. I'm also available uh, by cell phone, 702-400-7474. Again, 702-400-7474. Please use me as a resource if you have any issues. Um, I'm associated with the, pretty much the best attorneys in town. I've vetted out different attorneys that I work with that I can call and text if you have a problem. I'm always reaching out to certain attorneys. If you have a specific problem, I want to be able to help you guys. It's not all about the money situation. It's about getting the help and solving problems for people in the Las Vegas uh, and Clark County. Um, if you have any questions or concerns today, you can basically call in. There's going to be two numbers. One's going to be 702-329-6947. That's 702 702- 329-6947. We also have an 800 number, which is 855-502-4321. Um, on the uh, Progressive app, app that we talked about a minute ago, basically, there are also PDFs, which we call uh, resources. If we just go there for a quick second, um, we click on resources. There's different flyers and PDFs that are available depending upon what problem you have. So I would ask anybody to share this you know, with people in the community. And when you go down the list, you will see there's all kinds of different things for children, um, for people that are adults, um, if you have children and you need any type of help. There's so many resources that are basically out there. There's job fairs. There's um, any resource that's out there. A lot of people always tell me that they want to start a nonprofit. I'm saying there's so many nonprofits that are out there. Just basically you know, be associated with them, get connected. You don't have to open up another nonprofit. So again, there's all these different PDFs. And then if you want also... You can go to the Problem Solver Facebook page as well, where I'm always um, adding different things as well to the page of different resources. Again, I'm available 24-7. Text or call, go to the app. Uh, we also could schedule a time to meet. If you're looking to meet to go over an issue, a problem, you know, neighbor dispute, whatever the situation be, I'd be more than happy to help and meet with you guys for coffee at your home, whatever I can basically do. Uh, again, I'm associated with different nonprofits, different uh, foundations, uh, realtors, mortgage agents, loan modification, uh, uh, people that can help out, attorneys that can help with probate, foreclosure, um, working with different uh, mental health counselors for mental health. Um, I have several police officers that are friends of mine that I basically can reach out to as well. So any problem concern, I like to basically help out. For this week, resources for the week, basically, I just wanted to mention a few different things. Uh, for COVID-19 vaccinations, I am working with a few different local pharmacies. If you want to basically get in, I can make it happen for you. Just call my number, 400-7474. I'll let you know which pharmacies that you can basically go to to get in for the vaccination for COVID-19. I have a local law firm that basically is doing free wills. If anyone needs one, a local law firm is, is in town is basically assisting anybody, which, of course, you know, we don't want to talk about that, but it pays to get it. And it is free, so it's something that I can you know, pay it forward to you guys. 
Food distribution locations, if you know of anybody that basically that needs food, there are some still difficult times, people getting back to work, things are moving, the strip is moving, I see people you know, working and so on, but there are still several different food distribution locations that are available. Um, right now, it's kind of tax season as well. Some people say they can't afford to get their taxes done. Uh, there are basically different nonprofits on my page that if you're making 57000 or less, um, you can get your taxes done for free. There's no excuse. Get that done. Make sure you get your stimulus check as well if you basically qualify. Uh, this week, we have the Richard Harris Law Firm who's evaluating accident and worker compensation cases. If you have any of those that want to be evaluated, there's free evaluations for anything um, that you basically have this week. Uh, ticket Busters is another local law firm that is offering to review any traffic ticket problems or tickets that they have. They would like to provide some assistance, give you a review of what they could basically do with their team of attorneys. We also have Clark County Justice Center is doing free mediation for any neighbor disputes or civil matters. They are doing them virtual as well, but basically they can help out. It is a free service. And again, United Way, which is 211, which is basically the referral uh, services that you can call 211 on your phone, cell phone, or landline. You also can call 311, which is not emergency for the police issues. Um, on the screen here, we have 211. Most people don't know about it. It's been around for about maybe about over maybe 12 years. And again, these are helping Nevadas, uh, Nevadans connect with services that they need. And again, it's a free service. Every week it changes. If you say that you need help, mental health, if you need money, you need a voucher program, you need a place to stay, they will tell you during the week which place to go. So I highly recommend calling 211 as another resource that's available. Uh, this week, I basically had three different people that called for some three different problems. And I wanted to kind of share you know, my thoughts as a retired police officer. Remember, I'm not an attorney, but I'm sharing my background and experience from being a police officer for 17 years here in Henderson in New York City. By the way, on the screen, there is a QR code that you can use from your phone. And you can add the QR, uh, I'm sorry, the app itself to your home screen. Um, so the QR code basically is on your screen right now. Number one, basically for the week, uh, someone called me the other day that was homeless in a car with an addiction problem and basically had a future court date for a DUI in June. He didn't even know that the court date was in June, so happened to look it up online for him just to kind of educate him, but he just didn't know about the court date. He was arrested, and uh, he said, you know, I don't know when I have to go back to court. I wasn't notified. So I basically looked it up, and it was June, um, and, uh, I, you know, he was concerned about the case, but it was June, but he did tell me that he had an addiction problem. So and he's living in his car, and he was over by one of the local hotels. So I referred him over to Novum U, which is basically helping people with um, housing, with uh, counseling, with getting people jobs. And again, if you need that resource, it is on uh, the Problem Solver page. So again, if you know anybody with, uh, suffering any type of addiction that's homeless, sleeping in their car, you know, these are, these are people that I'm helping. So it was one person that's actually, they're going tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock to basically get the help that I referred them to. The other one had someone with several different tickets and a DUI that was in a warrant, and they wanted to go to the DMV, uh, but they really needed an attorney to help them since they had tickets, uh, plus they had a DUI warrant. So it's not really, you know, the best thing to do is to be mobile and moving around and driving if you have a warrant because you can get arrested. So I referred them over to the Defender's Law Firm to basically get some help. Um, before you go to the DMV, right, we want to kind of take care of a situation if you're in a warrant. So we need to make sure we clean these things up because it's just not something you want to do is driving around you know, in a car with a warrant, especially if you have children. So uh, please, if you need help, reach out to me. The third person was uh, someone that got into a car accident. They were a passenger. They weren't sure what to do. They said they weren't feeling that great after the accident. And I said, look, you should always get checked out by a doctor, maybe nothing. Um, I've referred them over to um, an attorney over at the Richard Harris Law Firm. Um, they didn't have insurance, so they were worried about that. A lot of people are concerned that if they're involved in an accident, they don't have insurance, but they don't realize that if it's someone else's fault, the accident, that a lot of times the, the attorneys will um, have medical providers that will work, um, do medical treatment, and there's something that's called a lien, and they will basically lien um, the case, and they will give you medical treatment as the attorneys are working on your specific case. So just because you basically you know, think that you don't have insurance and you're not feeling well doesn't mean that you shouldn't go to the doctor. But I would recommend either call myself or an attorney to basically just get some advice before you make a poor decision. Remember, sometimes there's no rewind button, so we want to basically make sure that we you know, um, take action right away when we have a situation. So those were the three unusual things uh, this week that basically people called for. In regards to charity work, every single month we try to work with a different charity. We did have um, last week basically shine a light which is basically a foundation that basically helps homeless people that goes into the tunnels and basically is helping people you know, become 
friendly with them and also trying to help them basically get out of being homeless and being living un underground in the, in the tunnels. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people that live in the tunnels. You wouldn't believe it. Um, if you go on to the problemsolver.vegas app, you can listen to the last podcast show and you can hear them talking about their situations in the past and how they're helping people. The one thing that they are making a difference, and if you want to make a difference, anyone that's listening or watching, you can actually go to Amazon and there's a wish list that's basically called Shine a Light. And there's different things that basically you can purchase, click a button and buy it. And it would automatically be shipped to Shine a Light Foundation. And they would take those items, whether it's flashlights or food or snacks, and they will every Saturday go out and meet with people that are homeless in the tunnels and try to basically do intervention, but also give them some food and drinks, not to pressure them to leave so quickly, but the goal is to get them to be productive members in society and not be living in dangerous conditions um, underground. So again, I would actually challenge anybody that wants to help out is, uh, is basically go to um, uh, Amazon and basically just go to, I always forget this here, but shine a light, like shining a light, shine a light and go to the gift uh, wish list and see if you can help out by one thing. You're helping a lot of people in general. Um, the other thing was is that uh, every single month, basically, we, have the, we choose different charities. Um, we have a, a T-shirt, which is the shirt I'm wearing called the Problem Solver shirt. If any of you guys want to buy the shirt, we've had a few people buy the shirt. $14 of any money of the purchase of the shirt will go directly to uh, the nonprofit, Shine a Light. There's no money made by selling the shirt. It's just something that I'm doing to help different nonprofits. So if you're interested in buying a shirt, please go ahead and go to the app, and you can do that as well. With that basically being said, um, we're going to be to take a, a quick minute commercial break for some of the sponsors that are helping the Problem Solver Weekly Show. Um, I want to thank the Richard Harris Law Firm, the Defenders, and Ticket Busters uh, for basically help sponsor the show. And with that being said, when we come back in a quick minute, we're going to be meeting with a great guest, Ryan Helmick, who's the senior attorney for the Defenders Law Firm downtown in Las Vegas. So we'll be back in a quick minute. Thank you. Another day in Nevada, and we're lucky enough to call it home. The world knows us for our entertainment, but the best part about living here is the everyday people of our communities. And when one of us gets injured in an accident, well, I guess you could say it's personal. We fight for the people of Nevada every day. The Richard Harris Law Firm at 444-4444, just in case. I recommend the Defenders because they say what they're going to do and they do what they say. You're the client, they're working for you, the attorney is your attorney. I am very impressed with the relationship the Defenders has with their clients and I hope to continue working with them. It's not just signing people up, getting clients, it's we're going to take care of your problems and they care about people. Neither one of us are giving a hand out to those people so that they could take advantage, but both of us are giving them that massive hand up. From the moment I came into the office, everyone working at the front desk was super nice um, and just made me feel like I was at home. So when you call, you know that they're working for you and that they want the best for you. Universal Motor Cars, your one-stop shop for all things auto, service, body repair, collision repair, free towing with repair, all under one roof. State-of-the-art paint equipment and facilities, trained certified technicians, lifetime warranty on paint. Universal Motor Cars accepts all insurance. Over 10 years in business, LVAC members receive 10% off labor. Call 702-754-6774. Welcome back to The Problem Solver. Thank you for joining us. Today, I have a, a, a special guest here, Ryan Helmick, who's a senior attorney for the Defenders Law Firm. And this is an amazing topic. And, and welcome, Ryan, and thank you for joining the show. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So, Ryan, so I, I got to know you for the last year or two in general, and I wanted to bring you on the show because, you know, a lot of people get stopped by the police, and since you're a criminal defense attorney doing this for a long period of time, mm -hmm. I want to kind of go over, like, you know, just what you do and how you basically help people in general. Um, I think that a lot of people have a negative, um, a negative connotation. When you say criminal defense lawyer, they automatically think that, oh, you're, you're always representing bad people. Like, right. these are bad people, you know. But first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you from here? Where are you are from? Well, I, uh, I grew up here since the third grade, uh, here and uh, Florida, Cocoa Beach, Florida, back and forth. My parents were divorced, and so uh, had to do that whole deal. 
um, until I was 18, going back and forth from Florida to uh, Las Vegas. But Las Vegas is my uh, primary home. It's where I went to middle school and high school and did some college here and, and went to law school in San Diego and came back and took the bar here. Okay. And um, how long have you been practicing uh, law? It'll be nine years in October. Got it. It's a long time. In all criminal defense from day one. Got it. So you've been practicing for nine years. You always did, in the beginning, did you ever work in another law firm where they were doing like family law or divorce or? No, I, uh, I guess you could say I kind of interned at a <coughs> law firm um, that my uh, father owned uh, where they did a lot of DUIs, uh, a lot of traffic tickets, some domestic violence batteries and some low-level le- low uh, felony cases. Uh, and so that's kind of what sparked my interest in, uh, in wanting to do criminal defense in general. And, uh, and that's what caused me to uh, have a major in criminal justice itself. When you worked there specifically, was there something that happened that you're like, wow, I really like the fact of helping people, like they were doing DUIs and tickets. Mm-hmm. Was there something that kind of uh, sparked that interest of just helping or why criminal, like why not? Well, I'll tell you, uh, there was one thing that, that really uh, caught my attention. It was I was sitting at, the, at, at my dad's office one time, and this is when the O.J. Simpson trial was taking place. Uh, I'm talking about the Palace Station um, robbery trial, which I believe was 2007. And I'm watching the uh, trial because it was televised. And, uh, and I had said to myself uh, at that point, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to be a trial lawyer. I want to be like these guys uh, up here in the courtroom. Uh, uh, doing trials, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's what uh, uh, also sparked my interest in regard to doing criminal defense and more specifically in regard to uh, being a trial lawyer. And so ever since then, um, I've kind of went down that road and uh, never looked back. Uh, of course, uh, the main reason, and uh, you know, as, as cheesy as it may sound, is, uh, is the ability to help so many people helped thousands and thousands of people over my career as a criminal defense lawyer. Uh, uh, People who are sometimes at their lowest point in their life, right? Uh, And my job is to try to give them some peace of mind, try to get them out of that situation, and uh, and we work as hard as we can to do that uh, at our law firm. What, um, they always say that the criminal defense attorney is like the underdog, like why is that? Well, we're always the underdog. The deck is always stacked against us because you have, number one, you have uh, uh, an immediate presumption, I'll say, of guilty, right? It's, it's, and it's supposed to be the opposite. Uh, it's supposed to be you're presumed innocent. But we all know in the criminal defense field that that's not true. Uh, you're, in fact, presumed guilty, okay? Uh, and you've got to climb your way or claw your way uh, out of that presumption, and uh, if the case goes to a jury trial, for example, <clears throat> the jury typically looks at the individual sitting next to me, and I ask this a lot in jury selection, right? Do you think the individual sitting next to me uh, is guilty? Do you think he, he must have done something wrong because he's sitting uh, in this courtroom, right? Uh, and so a lot of people raise their hands when I ask that question. Um, because why else would he be here, right? Um, but he could be there because he's innocent or she's innocent, right? And so, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, you have that part stacked against you. You're up against the state of Nevada, which is um, uh, run by a prosecutor who works for the state of Nevada. And typically when you take the case to, uh, to trial, they have uh, two lawyers, right? And, uh, and sometimes I'll have another lawyer working with me as well. But a lot of times I do the trials on my own. Um, and then they have all the resources available f- as a prosecutor working under the state of Nevada. And those resources are detectives, uh, crime scene analysts, uh, multiple different experts, blood splatter experts, gun experts, every single expert that you can uh, possibly think of. They have the medical examiner, the autopsy doctor. Um, they have all these resources and I'm representing people a lot of the times who don't have the money to afford those things now there are some ways that we can um, of course uh, uh, apply to the court it's called a witness motion 
um, for us to be able to also level the playing field and get the right experts that we need uh, uh, to also uh, counterpunch, so to speak, um, the prosecution's experts on our own. So the deck is always stacked against a criminal defendant, and a lot of times um, uh, Jerry Spence actually refers to it uh, as the defense of the damned, right? You're, you're defending somebody who, who is in a difficult situation and they need somebody who cares about them, number one, you, you got to care about your client, you got to care about their case, number two, and you got to be willing to work as hard as you can, outwork the prosecution in every aspect, and be the most prepared lawyer when you walk into that courtroom uh, every single time. You know, as a police officer for 17 years when I used to go to court, you know, whoever was sitting there, I mean, maybe as a police officer, you become a little bit negative over time when you sit in the courtroom. Everybody that sits there, as a police officer, is like, he's guilty, he's guilty, he's guilty. Like, everyone's guilty, right? And I think when you have the jury, the jury's looking at these people saying that they're guilty as well. I just think it's such a tough spot because they're in, like, that guilty spot. They're in, like, a guilty seat, you know, and right. there's so much against. And, and I agree with what you're saying. I mean, the justice system is a difficult one, and I always say that the just, like you have to survive the justice system because it's difficult, right? They have all this money and resources against you, and if you don't have the money, you're kind of stuck, right? Like you could, if you don't have any money, that you have the public defender, which not saying there's anything wrong with a public defender. Right. In my experience, having a private attorney that's passionate and fighting is really, really important. So, um, you know, you definitely see that you have that passion. Why are you so passionate about helping people with regards to these criminal defense cases? As you speak about it, I mean, I can see your energy and your yeah. being passionate. But what, what inside your gut, your stomach, basically, is a reason why you're so passionate? Well, uh, I want to be the best at what I do. Okay. Okay. Uh, every day I wake up, I, ask, I tell myself um, uh, to help as many people as I can get with what they want. There's a, a great quote by Zig Ziglar that says, you can have everything in life that you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Another good quote is, service to others leads to greatness. Service to many, rather, leads to greatness. And so my job is, is to serve, right? Is to help as many people as I can uh, get what they want. And in the criminal defense field, that means to, to get the best result possible, right? And to know at the end of that case that I did everything I could. I never want to walk out of the courtroom saying to myself, well, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that, right? Um, you never want to have that regret on your shoulders. And so uh, I take that very, very seriously. And, uh, and, and the passion comes from just to really wanting to be the best and really wanting to help as many people as I can. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, when you have a, a, a client's mother uh, or when you have a client uh, after a case, um, even if they're found guilty, even if they're found guilty, come up to you and hug you and say thank you for what you did for them, uh, for how hard you worked for them, uh, is priceless to me. To get a letter from a client who, who has been found guilty of a life sentence. I mean, listen, anybody in our field knows that you, you, you can't win all the cases, and, and the definition of winning is different uh, in our profession. It's not about getting the guy off, right? You can't get the guy off every single time. Sometimes you are mitigating somebody's uh, sentence. You're shedding some years off of their sentence because uh, the evidence is stacked against them, right? And so you still, and when you get a letter in the mail from these people that the ones that are found guilty and also the ones that are found innocent, right? You, uh, that, you, that you find not guilty. Uh, we have many of those. But you get that letter and that's what makes, that's what keeps the wheels turning for me, right? Uh, are those little things, uh, uh, not so much the money, it's those little things that are way more important uh, to me. Um, and, so. I, and I commend you for your work because the bottom line is that you are representing people you know, at their lowest point in time, and, and whether they did something that was a mistake or basically that it was false allegations, I mean, they basically only have you that's helped with fighting the fight, you know, for them to be free. Right. And, um, you know, I noticed over a period of time of, you know, working in law firms that basically if you don't have someone passionate for you, 
then basically I think your chances just go downhill. And that's why I always get worried sometimes with different attorneys that are not passionate. Like you, I always tell people, like, as long as you feel that that attorney is being passionate to help you with your case, that's the attorney that you want. You want to be able to, you want to feel it in your belly that this person is yeah. basically going to help you, you know? So I commend you for all your work that you're basically doing to help people. And it's, it's not about the money situation. It's about helping people and, and getting the, uh, justice for them as well or getting due process, um, which I think is extremely important. Um, as we know, the justice system is not perfect and basically that you're helping basically uh, either clear people's names or basically um, get them to a better situation uh, for their future. And like I said, we all make mistakes in life. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. You know, right. No one's perfect. We all make mistakes in life, but we all want to move forward and so on. Um, quick question. So a lot of people you know, don't know what a criminal defense daily routine is in general. You kind of mentioned you wake up in the morning. I'm sure you're thinking about cases you have going on. What is just a daily, you know, over a quick you know, 30, 60 seconds, what is, uh, what's normally the, your daily schedule like for someone who doesn't know? Because sometimes they think attorneys are just not doing much. They're in their sure. office. Um, I think as a criminal defense attorney, you're doing a lot more because you're in the courtroom. You're always constantly fighting. But just tell us, you know, uh, what, you, what is your normal schedule like for the day? Right. That's a great question. So as a criminal defense lawyer, I'll tell you my daily routine. Get to the office about 7.45, uh, 7.30 sometimes. Court starts around 7.30, 7.45. Um, and we gather all of our files for the day. Uh, I have a team of lawyers. I have two associates that work under me. Uh, and we, uh, uh, we delegate what we're going to do and who's doing what. And we have actually already planned that uh, days in advance. So we grab the files, we go to court, we're at court for probably several hours, uh, handling the cases after we uh, have handled the cases. Uh, we come back to the office, um, relay the notes of each particular case to the paralegals. The paralegals then write letters uh, to the clients, letting them know uh, what happened with their case to keep them informed. Uh, we try to get those letters out as soon as possible so the client, uh, who usually is anxiously waiting to know what happened, uh, can get an answer to that question. <coughs> and then now we're looking at tomorrow's cases, right? What preliminary hearings do we have to prepare for? Uh, what trials do we have to prepare for? Uh, what motions do we have to write? Uh, all the, what cli new client meetings do we have to, uh, uh, people that we have to meet with, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so every day you're in the courtroom, I would say half the day you're in the courtroom, half the day you're in the office, uh, in preparation so for example after today after this uh, podcast I have to go back to the office and prepare for a preliminary hearing that's going to take place tomorrow uh, and so that's pretty much the everyday uh, in general of at least uh, um, my role as a criminal defense lawyer and, and, and many others as well now it does change a little bit when you are preparing for a jury trial things get a little bit more intense you're still doing your morning appearances but now you're, now you're working on a case, uh, specifically one case, uh, sometimes for a few months, right, um, depending on the level of the case. And a lot of times you may be working uh, seven days a week um, because this is a jury trial that may carry a life sentence. It might be a murder case. It might be a sexual assault case. And so there's, 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 uh, you've got to cover every single basis. Uh, and so sometimes that may take working every day uh, to be prepared. And, uh, and so that's different. When we got the jury trials going, and right now it's a little bit different with COVID. There's not that many jury trials going forward. But pre-COVID, um, there were a ton. And, uh, and you'd have to spend a few months working on that particular case. Got it. No, there's definitely a lot of work, and I think the preparation is really important. And I know that you like to prepare and you have to be very detailed oriented and basically be very studious in regards to, I mean, studying right, the, the police reports and the evidence. I mean, I'm sure files can be stacked high, right. you know, just of any case in general. Um, we're going to basically, in, in about 30 seconds, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But I want to, again, take the time to let anyone know that they can call in to have any questions or problems for myself or Ryan Helmick, who's the senior attorney for the Defenders. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can call in to 702 329 6947, and then there's an 800 number, 855-502-4321, uh, if you want to call in any questions. Um, I want to get, again, thank uh, several of the sponsors of the show, basically, uh, with some quick commercials. Um, when we come back in a, in a quick minute, we'll go over, uh, Ryan Helmick actually wrote a book called The Defense Begins, and we're going to talk about the book and get some more information um, about um, protecting your rights and uh, false allegations and DUI and, and some great stuff in general. So we'll be back in a quick minute. Thank you. Meet 
Joe. Joe's a very busy guy. He's always driving from work to meet friends. And sometimes Joe's in a hurry and doesn't follow all the rules. Joe just got a traffic ticket. Traffic tickets are a major hassle. You have to take time off work to go to court and stand in long lines. A couple days later, Joe saw his friend Matt. Joe tells Matt about his traffic ticket troubles. Another traffic ticket? Just call Ticket Busters. Ticket Busters? What's Ticket Busters? Ticket Busters is the quick and easy traffic ticket solution with licensed attorneys. Ticket Busters went right to work for Joe's ticket. Ticket Busters did all the work saving Joe time and stress. A few weeks later, Joe receives a call from Ticket Busters and his traffic ticket has been resolved with no points, no traffic school, and no insurance increase. Ticket Busters help Joe bust his ticket and Ticket Busters can help you too. Go to TicketBusters.com, download our app, or call 702-666-6666. Thanks for joining uh, Audio and Video Podcast. Welcome to the show again. We're here with Ryan Helmick, Senior Attorney for the Defenders Law Firm. Uh, Ryan's on the show sharing some great information. I'm trying to extract the best information from Ryan for all the viewers and listeners. Um, you know, it's not every day that we have a, a senior criminal defense attorney um, on, on the show, basically. And there's just a lot of information, which is great to get out, to share with people, because just people just don't know what a criminal defense attorney does. Uh, we mentioned before the break that you, got, you recently wrote a book. I see you brought the book with you called The Defense Begins. Tell us a little bit about the book. Right. Uh, it's called The Defense Begins. I wrote this in uh, April of last year. Um, it's always been something that I've wanted to write. I actually had the time uh, to finally do it uh, uh, during COVID uh, of last year. Got it. And uh, you can find it on Amazon. And I'll tell you the reason behind it. Well, I'll tell you the title first. The Defense Begins Nevada Criminal Justice, a roadmap, a roadmap for the accused and their families. Okay. So what this is, and I give it to every single client, I give it to every potential client, uh, and basically what it does is it breaks down the Nevada criminal justice system uh, in a very easy, uh, easy to read uh, way. Right, an easy to understand way, and I put examples in there and so forth, because people can be lost in okay. the criminal justice system. They, 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 like you had mentioned, they may have never been through this before in their lives, right? And they have also never, never thought that they would ever be through it, um, and so they are confused, they're scared, they're anxious, um, and the book offers uh, them a bit of. Uh, an educational aspect to it in addition to them talking to me right uh, but it's just it's kind of a supplement of that to give them some peace of mind give them some education to know what to expect a lot of families call me and say ryan you know what's what, what's what's this hearing mean 
or um, you know what's what's happening next in the case or or you know how's this case work right and so I break it all down you know what's an opening statement Ryan or what's a closing argument or what's voir dire called which is called jury selection you know what does all this stuff mean and so I kind of break it all down as I mentioned in the easy to read easy to understand fashion it's a short read it's only 70 some pages uh, and I also put a lot of phone numbers in there that people may need, house arrest, uh, scram bracelet, which is an alcohol monitoring device, a lot of resources for people. I have flow charts that break down the criminal case from the beginning to the end. Sometimes people aren't even charged with a crime. They might be being investigated. And so we have a pre-charges section and how to deal with uh, being investigated uh, for a crime and how to best handle that situation. And so, uh, again, I wanted to do it to help people. Um, as I mentioned, we give it to every client, every potential client that, that comes into the office, and, uh, and it's on Amazon as well. So I know that it's on Amazon. I know one of the things that you're going to do as a favor for us is that um, if someone who's listening to the show wants to get a copy, normally it's on Amazon where you can go purchase it, but you have today's Tuesday, you have till Friday. If you want to get a free copy courtesy of Ryan Helmick, you can go to thedefensebegins.com. And you can basically click, click on get your free copy, um, name, address, and you guys will mail the book out for free uh, by Friday. Um, if you don't get it by Friday, then you can find the book on Amazon. And I appreciate you doing that for any of the, uh, the viewers and the listeners. I think it's great to have this, you know, this book basically just to give some direction. Uh, it looks like a small read, so it's not like you, know, you have to be an advanced, studious person to, right. to read this book. So I think that's great. It's amazing. Uh, I think the book needs to probably go out to a lot of people just to educate them in general. Right. Um, so you mentioned about like uh, people that are not being charged sometimes or the police are basically investigating them. Uh, what should people do if the police call them and they, and they are being questioned? Like, hello, this is Metro Officer or right. Henderson, and I'm calling because someone you know, stated that you did something. Uh, can I talk with you? Right. What, what do you recommend with that? Well, I mean, I recommend first that, that you consult with a lawyer. It's really that as simple as it may sound, right? You've got it. You've got to talk to a lawyer. You've got to make sure you understand your rights. Here's one of the main purposes of a criminal defense lawyer. Uh, they are defenders of the Constitution, right? Because the prosecutors, the police, um, they have certain rules that they have to follow uh, pursuant to the Constitution. Um, and they have certain rights that they cannot violate. And uh, many people might not know mostly uh, anybody who's not in the field uh, will likely not know every single one of those rights that they have. And so uh, that's the true role of a criminal defense lawyer, to make sure that the police do not violate your rights, that the prosecution does not violate your rights, and to make sure you have a fair shot uh, right from the beginning. So to answer your question, if somebody is being investigated for a crime, they need to call a lawyer as soon as possible. It doesn't, it, it's not a negative effect. Many people think, well, if I call a lawyer, they're going to think that I'm guilty. No, that's not true. Uh, they're going to understand that you want to consult with a lawyer and, and protect yourself. If they get mad, who cares? You are protecting yourself. They're going to try to be your best friend. They're going to pat you on the shoulder. They're going to offer you a cup of coffee. They're going to uh, you know, offer you some water. They're going to say, hey, come down and talk to us, right? Uh, everything's going to be fine. I can't tell you how many cases that I've had where everything's going to be fine, and then they end up in handcuffs in jail, right? And so uh, you don't want to talk to them without at least consulting with a lawyer first to see, uh, what the about uh, what the best uh, route uh, uh, they should take would be got it someone um, from Facebook sent in a message uh, they said do uh, police officers lie in order to get information from you I guess in regards to maybe uh, a ruse um, how, can you explain a little bit of a ruse and how that works I mean, even though I was a police officer did that how would you explain it from your perspective people think so that you know it's like a trap police officers lie um, have I had many cases where that has been the case? Absolutely, uh, there's, there, uh, without a doubt. Uh, do all of them? Of course not. I have buddies that are, that are friends of mine that are police officers that are very good police officers. Um, do they twist the truth sometimes? Yes, and I mean, I think that you can answer these questions. And uh, uh, do they do things for the purpose of um, 
getting that person, that suspect, to uh, uh, to get the information out of them, to right? extract it, to extract the information that they want. Do they do a sort of a ruse in a uh, in a sort of a dance? Uh, absolutely, to confuse the individual to get the information that they need, and and the person may not even know that it is occurring. They may think that they're just going to walk out of there. It's not a big deal, right? Uh, the police officer seems like a nice guy. Seems like he's on my side, and uh, uh, you know he wants me to do this polygraph test. I got nothing to hide. I'll do this polygraph test. No, if you say that you're wearing a brown shirt, and then during the polygraph say you're wearing a red shirt. If you say it was 7 p.m. and then you, and then all of a sudden you say it was 8 p.m. It's these little things that people don't realize that can cause uh, the police officer to say, "Wow, oh, he's lying. He's lying." Now look at he, he got the shirt wrong. He got the time wrong. He got the car wrong. I mean, these little things that people don't take notes of uh, uh, in their everyday life, right? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the, the, the question that from the Facebook op, um, viewer back to you, right? As a police officer, um, you probably have some experience in that too, right? Yeah. You know, I will share with you that, you know, it, it, you're trained as a police officer to extract information and to use a ruse. You're allowed to lie in regards to not getting into like a house to search, right. but to basically to extract information. I remember when I used to go a lot of times with juveniles in a park, I would say, by the way, tell me what happened here. There's cameras that are located on, you know, on these uh, light posts that they just placed up a few days ago. If I have to go to my car and basically look up the video, you're going to make me, you know, waste my time. Just tell me what happened because if I see the video, I'm going to see what happened. Meanwhile, well, there was no cameras. Right. And they would say, well, I did this, and I did that, I did that, and they would admit to it. You know? But you're allowed to use it as a, as a ruse to basically get people to admit to things in general. So we used to laugh a little bit kind of using different styles, but it was legal, and you're allowed to do it, and there was nothing wrong with it. You know, um, as long as it was reasonable suspicion or probable cause or right. Miranda rights were read and stuff like that. So, I mean, the bottom line is I think the biggest thing is that most people that, I, that I've spoken to over the years, even when I was a police officer, when someone said, look, I don't want to speak without an attorney, as much as I was frustrated, I was like, they're smart that they're not speaking with that representation. So if there's no marks, if there's no injuries, if there's no evidence, the person doesn't get arrested and the report gets closed out. So it's, it was rare, at least here in Henderson. In New York City, as a police officer, nobody would talk to you. I mean, I'm not sure where that came from, but no one talks to the police in New York City, um, especially in the area that I worked in, in in Brooklyn. But in Henderson, for some reason, everybody would speak and just tell you what they did. Like, I, I shot somebody, I stabbed somebody. And right, right. But um, so the bottom line is that you need, you should have an attorney. There's nothing wrong with having an attorney. If someone's making a false allegation or if you made a mistake, you basically need an attorney to basically advise you, even if it's any type of allegation. Uh, what exactly are Miranda rights uh, in your eyes? Because uh, some people say, well, they didn't read me Miranda. So right. do they throw out the whole case now? Uh, of course not. I mean, here's the problem with TV law and movie law and things like that. I can't tell you how many people said, well, they didn't, they didn't read me my Miranda rights, right? So my, so my case needs to be thrown out. That's it's not the way it works. That's not how Miranda works. So I hope that people can take, if they take anything away from uh, this podcast, I hope that they can take what I'm about to say away. Uh, Miranda only applies, okay, if the individual is in custody. So number one, they got to be arrested or they don't feel free to leave. And let me give you an, an example of them not feeling free to leave. So for example, uh, the cops show up to your apartment. Uh, they ask you to step outside. There's three police officers. They're all kind of surrounding you, and they tell you to come down to the front of uh, the police vehicle, and you're standing there, right? And they and they want to question, and they want to question you. Uh, do, do you think anybody would feel free just to say, "No, I'm good. I'm just going to walk away from this and go back up to my apartment"? Of course not. They don't feel free to leave. And so now the officer begins to question that individual. And I'm just going to give a hypothetical, an example here. You know, where'd you put the gun, Jimmy? Uh, tell us where you put the put the gun, and Jimmy says, "Well, I put the gun in the trash can uh, over there uh, behind the blue car." Okay, so at this point, no Miranda rights have been read, and what Miranda rights are, you know, you have a right to an attorney before questioning all these things, right? Right to remain silent. So since they were not read, and that person did not feel free to leave, or they were in custody, let's say the cuffs were on, then it's more. Uh, evident that the person, of course, is in custody. Then, then the statements that, that Jimmy said about the gun being in the trash can cannot come in to the case. Okay? So they have to be excluded. The gun has to be, the gun, if it's found in the trash can, 
through those statements have to be excluded. They cannot come into the case. They cannot come into the trial. Okay, but let's pretend the individual is not in custody. Right? They show up to the police station. Hey, Jimmy, come on down to the police station. Um, I want you to talk with us. Uh, it's voluntarily. You can leave whenever you want to leave. You can walk right out of the doors. Right? Jimmy comes down. He sits down with him. Gives him an, uh, you know, a full interview. Yeah. You know, I killed the guy. The gun's in the trash can. Um, uh, this is what happened. Uh, no Miranda rights were read. So Those are coming in because he had he had the ability to 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 be able to leave and the cops have had to have made that very clear that hey you're coming down here voluntarily uh you can walk out this door anytime you want right so miranda to break it down miranda only pri uh, only applies when the person is in custody or doesn't or, or doesn't feel free to leave it's reasonable that he wouldn't feel free to leave a reasonable person in, in his shoes would not feel free to leave and he is questioned and so the statements and any evidence found because of those statements therefore do not come into the case or the trial that's how miranda applies so even if you just have handcuffs on you does that mean that you're automatically arrested if a cop stops you right away and you have handcuffs on you so if you're not free to leave does that mean that you're arrested right away? Or you're that? arrested. Okay. Cuffs are on you. You're arrested. Now they're about to question you about a homicide, let's okay. say. Now they've got to read you your Miranda rights. Jimmy, you know, you have the right to remain silent, blah, 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 about the Miranda rights, okay? Now I want to ask you some questions about uh, uh, this murder. Uh, and Jimmy says, uh, uh, you know, no, no. Uh, I invoke my right to a lawyer or, or I have a right to remain silent. Or Jimmy starts talking. Uh, he's read his Miranda rights. Now, everything that he says is coming into the case, coming into the trial. Okay? Got it. That's good information. A lot of people just, you know, handcuffs on, not free to leave, Miranda rights. These are big issues in general. Uh, we're going to take a quick minute break. Again, I want to thank the sponsors, the Defenders, Ticket Busters, and the Richard Harris Law Firm for basically helping uh, the weekly show of The Problem Solver. Uh, when we get back, we're going to ask a few more questions in regards to, you know, what's the most common... Um, arrest that people get arrested for in Las Vegas um, and um, you know do you guys offer free consultation stuff like that so when we, we'll be back in a quick minute and uh, we'll see you in a second Another day in Nevada, and we're lucky enough to call it home. The world knows us for our entertainment, but the best part about living here is the everyday people of our communities. And when one of us gets injured in an accident, well, I guess you could say it's personal. We fight for the people of Nevada every day. The Richard Harris Law Firm at 444-4444, just in the case. Welcome back to The Problem Solver. Here today, Ryan Helmick, Senior Attorney for the Defenders Law Firm. Again, thanks for all my viewers and listeners. Thanks for joining us today on Tuesdays, 11 o'clock. Remember, if you have any type of problems, you can call text 702-400-7474. That's 702-400-7474. You can go to theproblemsolver.vegas. If you have any questions or concerns, references, resources, whatever you need, you can go to the app. Also, uh, which I forgot to mention earlier, this is also on the Go Live Vegas app, which is a la an app that you can download, listen to several different shows that's part of the, the digital radio network. Um, and again, the Problem Solver is on Tuesdays at 11, so you can listen audio or be on the Problem Solver Facebook page or the app to actually watch and uh, to interact as well. So we're back here with Ryan Helmick. A um, few questions uh, that basically we have a lot of people are messaging on, on Facebook and so on. You know, what is the most common arrest in Las Vegas? People think like maybe if you live in Kansas or New York that it's different. What are your thoughts in regards to here in Las Vegas? I'd say overwhelmingly, uh, maybe not overwhelmingly, but, but the most popular would be a DUI. Okay. I say, I say second to that, very close second to that, would be a domestic violence battery. Okay. And uh, we deal with, I've done with thousands of those myself. Uh, our team uh, at the Defenders in general, uh, one of my associates has 
probably dealt with hundreds of those himself. Um, and so uh, we have a lot of experience in dealing with both of those types of cases as they are the most common in Las Vegas. Got it. Can you tell us about the new law that passed about this jury trial for domestic battery? I understand that before there was no jury trial because mm -hmm. it was a misdemeanor. Why is it so crucial that there's a jury trial now for domestic battery cases? Most people don't even know uh, because a lot of people get arrested for domestic battery. Why it's so important that, that you have that right to a jury trial? Well, the right to a jury trial in, in general is extremely important. And so the law that passed allows for uh, six people to be a part of a jury for a domestic violence battery. One of the main reasons that it passed is because if somebody is convicted of a domestic violence battery, they lose their uh, constitutional right to own a firearm. And so the Supreme Court uh, felt that that penalty uh, was very severe. And I'm not quoting everything that the Supreme Court said. I'm just giving you uh, bits and pieces. Uh, they, thought, they thought that that was so severe that it required a jury trial. It was a great decision because uh, sometimes, not every case, but sometimes uh, on these misdemeanor cases, uh, on the felony cases, without a doubt, you want, you want a jury trial and you want 12 people. But on the misdemeanor cases, um, you want to have six people uh, making the decision uh, as opposed to one judge making the decision. There might be three or four different witnesses who saw it, uh, who saw the incident, or saw, or saw it a different way, right? Got it. And uh, uh, you, you you need the jury to uh, to cipher through that, to um, uh, be able to see from our perspective the reasonable doubt, right? And and all we need is one of them, right, to see that uh, uh, in our case. Um, to to mess up the uh, uh, the verdict, so to speak, to have a hung jury. So if someone's guilty of domestic battery, that means that they lose their gun rights forever and ever. Correct? They do. They can't they can't be a police officer. They can't be a security officer. They can't have a gun in the car, unless they get a governor's pardon. Got it. Which right. I understand is extremely difficult. Right. Right. Um, someone actually mentioned, I don't even know, but I haven't researched in a while, but there's a moratorium that the governor's not even doing them. But, I mean, the bottom line is I think that's the reason why you need a good criminal defense attorney like yourself to fight the case at the beginning and not at the end. I mean, to go for a governor's pardon at the end, I mean, you need to fight in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. The end, I mean, of course, you more money and time, and it's always better to be in front of something than behind it. Yeah, and you might not even get it, so. Yeah, so I, I do agree, you know, having a good attorney in the beginning is, is more important. What are your thoughts in regards right now, you know, marijuana, basically, it's no longer really the medical marijuana. It's basically, you know, uh, leisurely people are smoking. They're getting into a car, and they're basically getting arrested for DUI. And most people, I feel like there's no education about them smoking marijuana and getting in a car. Like, I don't think people know. It's not like on a wrapper. Right. You know, it says, you know, please wait six to eight hours before you drive a car. What's your thoughts right. in regards to that? Well, now, this is very tricky, okay, because marijuana is legal, uh, but so is alcohol, right? It doesn't mean you can you can drive after smoking marijuana just uh, marijuana, just like you can't um, drive after drinking uh, an amount of alcohol that'll put you above a point zero eight. The difficult part with marijuana is, and they're coming out with it. Law enforcement is coming out with a, a breathalyzer to be able to see how much marijuana is in your system. Now, marijuana is tricky because there's two types of marijuana that goes through your system. There's the active marijuana, which means that you are physiolog physiologically, that means you're high, basically. It's affecting you physiologically, okay? And then there's the inactive marijuana, which is called the marijuana metabolite, which does not affect you physiologically at all, all right? So, for example, somebody could smoke marijuana today, all right? The next day, they could go run an Ironman. They could drive a car. You know, they could fly a plane. They're not affected uh, physiologically in, 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 in any way at all. Um, but the problem is, is there's still a law on the books that says that if you have five nanograms uh, per milliliter of marijuana metabolite in your system, you can still be convicted of the DUI. Now, uh, this is being, uh, this needs to be worked on. And I believe it is being worked on. To, to hopefully try to get this off the books because it's not fair for somebody to who is prescribed marijuana by a doctor, mm -hmm. right, um, to be able to smoke it 
to be high one day and then the next day be completely fine, driving fine, and, and, and get pulled over and somehow uh, get arrested for a DUI when they're not physiologically impaired at all. So if I smoke marijuana, if I smoke and I smoke all the time, how many hours would you say, I know people's body weight and so on is different, would you tell someone like you should wait at least eight hours before you drive, six hours? If you had to throw out a number, even though it's not perfect, right, body weight and so right, on, right, how much right. you smoke, what, what the strength if you had to pick a number, what would you think it's more safe? Well, eight hours. All the, uh, well, eight hours is is, is would be extremely safe. Got okay. okay. Um, so you're going to get different opinions by different experts in this regard. Um, right now, if if you smoke right now, um, the active marijuana uh, should stay in your system for three to five hours. Okay. So three if you want to be hours, a, you want to be on the safe side, go five hours. Right. Um, and then it should it should be out of your system. Um, <coughs> now, like you said, it's going to depend on the weight of the person. With you know uh, a lot of different phys- physical factors, how much they smoke, all those things, and that's why you have a, a three to five hour window or a three to six hour window. If you want to go all the way to eight, then then, then you're pushing it to eight. If you want to be you know extremely safe, um, what are your thoughts, uh, real quickly? Um, the person I spoke to the other day got into an accident, and then they yeah. smoked marijuana. They were stressed out after the accident, and they smoked right there. When the officer came, they said, listen, I was stressed out. I smoked. So the officer said, hey, you're not supposed to be smoking in public. He's like, look, I was stressed out. Just got into an accident, and then I smoked. And the person, their officer said, hey, you know, I don't know if you want to incriminate yourself in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they, they thought probably he smoked you know, prior to the accident mm-hmm. as well, and he gets arrested for DUI. Well, uh, that's a good defense. That's a good case to defend, right? Because he got into an accident. He's probably uh, going through some anxiety, some trauma, and and he smoked marijuana. W- would he? What w- what would the proper charge have been? Uh, as you said, mm-hmm. s- you know, smoking marijuana in public. Uh, but he got arrested for a DUI. Uh, now there's a statute that says, as a part of the defense, that you have to sh- that you have to file prior to trial, showing that the individual. Um, drank, for example, I'm going to give an alcohol example, uh, after uh, he was behind the wheel of the vehicle, right? And so the intoxication occurred after that he was behind the wheel of the vehicle or an actual physical control of the vehicle. So in this particular case, that the, <coughs> that the, that the uh, marijuana smoking occurred after he was behind the wheel of the vehicle or an actual physical control of the vehicle. There's two types of DUIs, driving, you're pulled over, mm-hmm. or you're an actual physical control of the vehicle, meaning you're Let's say you're parked somewhere, you're on the side of the road, you're behind the wheel of the vehicle, the keys are in the ignition, right? You're in the driver's seat. So there's lots of different factors that the courts look at. But that would be a great, if somebody came into my office with that case, that'd be a great case to defend. Got it. We have about two minutes left. Just uh, explain, you, I understand I was on your website, you do free consultations and free strategy sessions and that you guys are even open 24 hours a day. Tell us just a quick bit about that. Open and right. I mean, right. Uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, our office is not physically open 24 hours a day, um, but the phone number. Uh, we have an answering service. We're open every. We're open from Monday through Friday, from eight to six, and then we have an answering service that it, that is uh, taking calls for 24 uh, seven, basically. And we offer free uh, strategy sessions, is what we call them at the office. So we sit down. Go over the case, answer any questions that they have, um, gather the story from the client, and talk to them about the game plan and try to give them some peace of mind, whether they hire us or whether they don't hire us. And then, like I said, they get one of my books, and they get some other information that can help them out. Ryan, I truly appreciate you being on the show today. Anyone that wants a book, you have till Friday to get a free book if you go to thedefensebegins.com. Otherwise, you go to Amazon to find this book as well. Um, if you want a free consultation or strategy session, please uh, hit up the defenders at 70203s, which is 333-3333. You can get in touch with Ryan. You can meet with him or uh, some of his other associate attorneys. Again, thanks, Ryan, for coming on the show. I hope to have you on the show in the future. And if anybody has a problem and you need some help, please, again, go to theproblemsolver.vegas. Reach out to me. Text call 702-400-7474. And I will see you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Have a great week. Thank you.